The views and comments expressed on the following radio program by its hosts and their guests do not necessarily reflect the views of rmconair.com or its affiliates. Listener discretion is advised. Yeah. New Tigolo, New Tigolo, New Tigolo, New Tigolo. 430. 7, 7, 7, 30. 2, 2, 15. Hey, y'all. Don't need a new style. Being dope is always in fashion. Peace to the West Coast, montage, fashion. Everything's in house, don't need a mansion. Doper than the last one. 430. And like me, I'll mix. I spit that foul. Yeah. And one. Everybody swing and holler at me if you land one. Don't need perfection, just passion. And don't need to be signed. I ain't got a cast on. A lot of opportunity. Easy bread I passed on. It just felt troubling. Now class is in session and we got them testers bubbling like Scantron. Fresh out the kitchen, signed with a stamp on I'm on some greatness, y'all on some lateness With no foundation, so it could never last long I display patience, I done played Jason It's Saturday the 14th, you got a mask on Come on, pushing me to the brink A stagger in my footsteps and I don't even drink It's so much on my mind, dog, and I can't even think It seems like everything is falling Pushing me to the brink I stagger in my footsteps and I don't even drink It's so much on my mind, dog, and I can't even think It seems like everything is falling they say the 336 is what raised him, but the 919 made him. Stark raving, rhyme like he ain't got the good sense God gave him. Anybody on his bad side, God saved him. Oh, I'm sorry, I was, I was rapping, you know. I think I'm Fonte. Shout out to Fonte, man. I love that song. I never get tired of it. Yeah. And who sings that song? Fonte. He, he should continue to sing it. Anyway, hater. Yeah. Hello, world. Locker Room Live, we're at you again. We are back. And I know you thought we wouldn't be back, but we are back. And um, we have a great show again for you. Um, I'm your boy, Simi Clutch. I'm JR. You can find me on Twitter. I am John Reed. And you can also find me on Twitter at Smitty Clutch. And check out our Instagram at Smitty Clutch. Check out our website, Locker Room Live TV, LockerRoomLiveTV.com. We're making moves out here. We are. Come see us. Yeah, please. Come to the studio. Throw a party, whatever. We we do it all. Or invite us to yours. That too. You know, we make (laughs) make everything hot. Exactly. So um, you can catch us every Friday on RMCOnAir.com right now. And we're live and direct. Word. Word. Call in. Call in if you uh, got something to say. What's the number? I forgot the number. Three, two, three. Why you bring it we'll up if you don't know the number? <laughs> Nine what? Nine six five. Sixteen hundred. Hey, yeah. we still new. You know, we get passes on stuff. Whatever. Like that. I'm not good with any numbers. So <laughs> anyway, let's get into some sports, right? What we let's do? do it. What we do? Everything is. What's going on right now? Playoffs. 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 <laughs> Playoffs. So playoffs is is the main news right now. At least for us, it is. And um, it's, it's winding down. We know we're getting to the best of the best now. And it's getting good. It's been good, but now it's getting really good. I mean, we just saw some great basketball yesterday. Right. I mean, if you ignore the sweep that, you know, the broom, the broom that uh, the Spurs did with the Memphis Grizzlies. Right. Ignoring that. Right. Yeah. I'm talking about the finals. Yeah, we're just talking about LeBron, basically. Basically. Sometimes I feel like that's the only exciting thing going on in the playoffs. Well, I mean, unless you're a Spurs fan. Right. Then or you, you like watching paint dry and grass grow. Right. And you find that exciting, like Spurs basketball. Maybe I'm just caught in a hype machine that is LeBron James. Well, you know. Like a little kid. About, yeah, a little 16-year-old <laughs> girl. Oh, wow. Girl, wow. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, the Heat and Pacers, you know, they, that was a great series. Went seven, man. That was tough. Yeah. That was a grinder. Yeah. And the Heat closed them out. It was a blowout. Definitely. And um, the Heat showed up. They did. They did. But the Pacers, you know, they've been improving and improving. I mean, it's, they were still shorthanded. Right. You know, they're missing one of their top guys. Mm-hmm. And they went pretty deep in the playoffs. Deeper right. than they've gone. Definitely, so. definitely. The difference was, I think, that Dwayne Wade was aggressive from the jump. He finished off with 21 points. Well, from the jump of not the series. No, no. Game seven. Game seven. Okay. Game seven. Let's yeah, make sure, we, the, you know, it's I clear. I think the world knows he stunk it up okay. the first six games. Okay, and, good. you know, he's, he's hurt. Something's wrong, not healthy, not the D-Wade of old. Um, but in Game 7, I think he made it a point to come out aggressive and attack the rim, him and LeBron. Yep. And I think they set the tone for the rest of the team. If you notice, the big man rebounded. Um, they played tough in the paint. They blocked shots. And I think it all started with Dwayne Wade and LeBron James attacking the rim. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, if LeBron James is the only one attacking the middle of the floor, that makes playing defense on the Heat a lot easier. Exactly. And it just set, it sets the tone. It sets, it sets a physical tone to the, to the series or yeah. to the game. Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, shout out to um, to Dwayne Wade. He showed up with 21 points, nine rebounds. Uh, LeBron did his thing like he always does with 32 points. 
Um, Paul George, up and coming superstar. Definitely. But you know, the the bad thing about when you do make noise is you get you know you get the big guy's attention. Right. Um, the big guy being LeBron and, James and Coach Vogel. Yeah, and um, <laughs> yeah, I mean LeBron James shut him down. Two for nine, seven points. Paul George, he was non-existent the whole game. He was. The yeah. difference was that LeBron guarded him from the from the jump instead of just in the fourth quarter. Yeah. Um, the game before in Game Six, when Paul George went crazy, he had Dwayne Wade on him and he abused him. Yeah. You know, like you know, a foster child. But that just shows you the greatness of of LeBron James. It's not just about the dunks. It's not just about him being able to shoot from anywhere on the floor. Defense. Defense. Just similar to Michael Jordan, the greatest ever. You know, he's I mean, big, people he's talk- long, he's quick, he yeah. can move laterally. I mean, is there anything he can't do? Some people say, you know, he has a hard time with going to his left. He can't I- remove that headband. That's what he can do. <laughs> <laughs> or he won't. Why are you going in on the man's hairline, man? Hey, we, we all we, got we, issues. We, I mean, obviously, you know, <laughs> but he needs to just cut his off. I mean, we got to go in him on something. I mean, he's just awesome in basketball. Right, right. But anyway, um, <laughs> you know, something else that was funny, um, I'm watching I'm watching the series, and I'm watching the Pacers, and I'm looking at, you know, it's, it's scrum time, scrub time, and yeah. it's the blowout, and Gerald Green is on the floor. And I'm looking, I'm like, am I in a hot video right now? A hot is boys that, video? Is that, is that Juvie? Yeah. Is that the the man named Juvenile, 400 Degrees? I could have sworn I saw BG somewhere in the background, too. I thought it might have been Juvenile. It just <laughs> took his gold teeth out. Look, we got a picture, too. I, let's just let's show the world just how similar these guys look. Yeah, like, they're I, like brothers. I think that's why the Pacers lost. Look at that. Because... Look at, he even has the juvenile face, like, huh? See, juvenile has been moonlighting <laughs> as Gerald Green. Exactly. And the, the world finally found out that, uh, you know, you can't have juvenile on your team and win the, the uh, <laughs> Eastern who, Conference Finals. Who knew juvenile was that talented? He raps <laughs> and he shoots jump shots. Man, he looked dead. And he represents the Nola, the Noya. Noya boy. <laughs> dead the keys on him. to the Rover truck. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> that was funny. Um, so now we have the finals. Yes. Yeah. So Miami has moved on. They move on to place the. Uh, I'm sorry to play the perennial good solid system team, San Antonio Spurs. I think if you wrote a book on how to play basketball, you would include the San Antonio Spurs. Yeah, and you got to have pictures. You know. Right. Timmy on one side, Popovich on the other. This is how you shoot a bank shot off the glass. Right. Parker with one of those little Frenchman hats on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean th- those guys. I mean, like, seriously, this is this is going to be a good finals. Definitely. Uh-huh. Well, it's already a good finals. I'm mm-hmm. a little worried for Miami though. Really? Because Interesting. if we talk about Game One, you can see D Wade was actually trying to assert himself like he was in Game Seven of the Eastern Conference. Finals. Early on, he was yes right? in the first half. They're down 0-1. Mm-hmm. You get a bad game out of D Wade and or Chris Bosh. Mm-hmm. Then you're down 0-2. Mm-hmm. You know, you've already dropped one at home. You can't afford to drop any more at home, mm-hmm. especially in the finals. Yeah. But you know it goes it goes 3-2-2, two, two, right? Right. Yeah. But they stole home court advantage as of right they now. They did. Right? Mm-hmm. So if they're starting like this and then they're going to come back and have a bad game, I'm, I'm, I'm just worried about the Heat. I disagree. I mean, I watched the whole game, and I, I still feel that the Miami Heat are okay. I think they played okay. They obviously had some turnovers late. They had like four turnovers late in the fourth quarter. I think they controlled the game. I just I don't think they're going to struggle to score against this Spurs team like they did with the Pacers and the Bulls. Um, now don't get me wrong, the Spurs are a great team. So if you you know you have to be flawless to beat them. They're not going to beat themselves. But if you watch the game, there were open shots there. Definitely. I think the the, the deciding factor was that LeBron James did not come out aggressive offensively looking for his own shot. Mm -hmm. Um, And we're going to show some highlights in a second, but uh, LeBron played a great overall game. He snatched boards everywhere. I think he had like 14-something rebounds and and, and 10 assists. He had a triple-double, but he wasn't looking for his own shot. No, he wasn't. He was facilitating. Right, and he went to the post a lot, and normally I would say that's great, but it seemed like the Spurs were packing in the paint, and Kawhi Leonard is a great young defensive player, one of my favorite players in the NBA, uh, had pretty good post defense. Yeah, right. So I think they need to spread the court and give LeBron some driving lanes. You know, I agree with you. I agree with you. Mm-hmm. But once again, I'm a little bit worried for Miami because, you know, I watched that game from start to finish. Mm-hmm. And I saw a Miami Heat team that didn't play horrible. Mm-hmm. They did not play horrible. They actually played a pretty decent basketball they game. still lost, yeah. And the Spurs just hung in, hung around, just hung around throughout the entire the first three quarters. Mm-hmm. And it, you almost didn't know they were only down by two. You would think that they were down by 10, right. down by 15, because, you know, the guys are on the other side were a little flashier and they're at home and it's loud. Mm-hmm. But every time they would get a basket, San Antonio would come down and get a, get a basket and keep doing their thing. Right. You know well, what I mean? Well, look, don't take our word for it. Let's show some highlights. Let's, let's show the world what, exactly what we're talking about. 
This is game uh, one. This is game one in the finals. Our buddy Kenny Mayne would say thanks for having cable television and, uh, and a remote and giving this Miami to Heat team since it's been put together. That first year they take on Dallas. Last year LeBron puts the he can't do it narrative to bed. Really maybe the most compelling matchup of all against the San Antonio team that's got the goods and has a run from 99 until now with Duncan Popovich and this core group together. Who will win? LeBron James. Hoping that Dwayne Wade can have the energy from game seven. Speaking of energy, you'd have to imagine this rested team would respond. But this Heat team, they can attack the cup. So good out All right, transition. so like we, like we spoke Dwayne of earlier, Wade Dwayne Wade came right out and attacked the rim. Um, they were very aggressive early on. Um, LeBron going big boy status with that move right there. Um, things look to be going pretty well for the uh, Miami Heat at this time. They were holding on to like a five-point lead, seven-point lead, three-point lead. Um, Dwayne Wade was, was clicking. Bosch was hitting some open shots, but like you said, the Spurs just hung around. And these guys are running the floor, you know. It's funny because Miami really hasn't changed their game plan. They're like, we're mm -hmm. going to push. Yeah. Unfortunately, that's San Antonio's game, too. It is. It is. So, Spolster's got to come up with something different here. He does. And, and something that's important is, the, I think the Spurs only have four turnovers, and that's Miami's game. They turn you over and get into the open court. And as they get we in all passing know, lanes, they deflect passes, they get on the fast break. Exactly. Right? Parker wants you to press him because he can he can beat any you know split any double teams uh, beat any um, ball pressure. So as we look here, um, Chris Bosh, when he gets it in that mid range area, he's really dangerous. I just think he's shooting way too many three pointers. I don't know who told him he was Dirk Nowinski, but he well, is firing. Apparently, you told him he could hit threes. A couple, what last I said week? he could. I didn't say shoot it like you're Reggie. I mean, hey, just because you can do something, I mean, you have to do it over and you over said again. He should stretch the floor. He can stretch the floor. I'm saying, hey, first you don't of want all, him shooting that shot. Well, first of all, I said that was Indiana, and this is a new series. Well, you know, he got his confidence up. That's where he got it. Well, Tony Parker did his thing. Um, you know, he's, like I said, he's, he lives in the paint. He's one of the best penetrating guards and finishing guards in the NBA. Absolutely. And this is when the Spurs really start to take over um, late in the game. This is a big shot from Parker right there. You don't expect him to hit that jumper with a hand in his face, but he did it because he's clutch. Yeah. And Danny Green. I mean, where did this guy, I mean, he went from D-League to the Cleveland to now he's one of the best shooters in the NBA. He really can't, doesn't. He's automatic. Can't leave him open. Cannot leave him open. You can't leave him open. He will hit those big threes at big times. And right here is is where Miami makes a run for it. You know, dumb foul from Danny Green. So he, he she makes the three and he comes back and gives three points right back to Ray Allen. Um, at this time, I'm sure all of Miami feels like they have a chance. But then, Tony Parker. <laughs> is that your French? That's my French. <laughs> I always want to learn French. <laughs> this was an amazing shot. I mean, he was under control the whole time. They're blitzing him. Um, the ball looked like it was going to be turned over, and he just glasses it. So, And that was the game. And But what they didn't show in the highlights was before that, a few plays, LeBron had a clear drive to the hole, and he kicked it out to Chris Bosh for a three-pointer. Yeah. In, I, yeah. I just think LeBron clutch. got to take, to, that, take that to the rim and get fouled. But it was an open shot. It was an open shot. But that's also on Bosh. He needs to step in. Uh, why he's gliding? I mean, I'm falling all the way back to the to the three point line. I don't know. At the time, though, they were down. It was either four. Or so it was around four points. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure Chris Bosh is thinking, "Let me cut this lead down. I yeah. can hit threes. Smitty Clutch said I can hit threes. So I'm going to step back and I'm going to pull one. I'm well, wide open. Well, Smitty Clutch not out there with you, Bosh. You better do your own thing. <laughs> Look, I mean, the Miami Heat. Uh, they started off hot. They were scoring the ball pretty easily, and then it just seems like they just got cold. I mean, no one scored 20 points. On the Miami's team. Not even LeBron? Not even LeBron. LeBron had 18 points. Mm. Dwayne Wade, 17. No one scored 20 points. We're on the flip side. Spurs, Parker at 21, Duncan at 20. You know, that duel, 1-2. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Well, I don't know. Game two. Game two. Uh, and it's on Sunday. It's on Sunday. If you're Eric Spolstra, what kind of moves do you make? Because, like I said, you, did not, you didn't get a bad game out of your guys. That's you, as a matter of fact, the, the wealth was spread pretty evenly. One thing I do think Spolster needs to do is he needs to give Mike Miller some more playing time. Mike Miller is ready to go. He's been hitting shots. Yeah, he's well, been on it. Wait, when you say ready to go, what do you mean by he's that? He's ready to play more minutes. He played 20 minutes last game, and I think he can go up to about 25, 26. That back has been bad all year, but he has been playing all year. And he's an elite rebounder from the small forward position. He's not LeBron, but he's like the next step below. And he can shoot. And he can shoot the thing, and he will not choke. Battier couldn't hit the side of a barn right now. He is building a city with all those bricks. Yeah, I think it might be time for O'Shane to Yeah, Shane had to up. sit it down and get in, that, um, get in the old man chair. Hang him up. Yeah, because his, his legs, I think Shane's legs are done. Yeah. That's what I think it is. I think the, the age is catching up to him, and the shots look flat, and he's just not knocking them down. So I think more 
Mike Miller, and more Norris Cole because Norris Cole has the speed to deal with Tony Parker. He had an, another one had a good game. Mm-hmm. I mean, there was nobody who you look at and you say, man, this guy just played terrible. This was the weak link. Right. I agree. Even Norris Cole. You know, he came in, gave him some quality minutes. Like you said, he showed his speed. He got to the cup, got right. to the basket a lot of times. Right. Um, so, yeah, I think, honestly, I think this is going to be a really tough series for Miami. I agree. I mean, they, they played a good game and lost. All right. Well, we're going we're gonna to touch on that next Friday. And we'll talk about game two and I think three. Uh, for right now, we want to go to a break. Let's do it. All right. So we're going to go to a break. And when we get back, let's talk about what we got going on Man, when we, we get got back. One of the this legends. Is, yeah, this is big. We got one of the legends. We are back, Locker Room Live, once and again, live and direct. What up, what up? LockerRoomLiveTV.com mm-hmm. for the latest sports analysis. Yes, indeed. Smitty Clutch here. John Reed, I am Jay. John Reed, what's my name? I am John Reed. I'm JR. My That's God. My name. My it's God. been a long day, bro. Lord help him. You know, I'm international. I'm traveling. Oh, you know, yeah, just yeah. got the plane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Excuses. Anyway, man, let's talk about something that matters. <laughs> we, got, we got a special treat for you, world. Uh, we have Roy Williams. Checking in with us into the locker room today. The legend. The legend, the all-pro safety, the Pro Bowl safety. You know him from just knocking people's heads off and making plays for my team, the Dallas Cowboys. I feel so good to have a member of the star with us. You can hate all you want. It's happening. It's here now. (laughs) <laughs> Nothing you can do. I'm gonna, you you go ahead. I'm gonna let you go ahead and have this, this has, episode. Thank you. That's all I'm asking. It Out is. of just respect for Roy, not for no. You. you better respect the star or the quote unquote America's team. That's right. You better respect the star. That's all you need yeah, to know. Okay. What's up, Roy? Man, how are you? Family, how are you doing? I can't complain, man. We happy to have you on the show. Well, thanks for having me. Oh, anytime, of course. So, um, before before we get into the interview, man, we want to show the world just exactly what you do and show them your work. So, if you can just sit tight, we're going to show a bunch of your highlights of you just basically injuring people on the football field and being violent. We'll make you look good. Intercepted at the 45-yard line, down the sideline, to the 15, to the 10. It's a touchdown. It's Roy Williams. And it's incomplete. And Roy Williams levels Todd Heap. A lot of people think this guy is the next great one, and so do I. I I wouldn't very casually compare anybody to Ronnie Lott because I think he's one of the great ones of all times. But when you can take somebody running full speed down the field, hit him, and in the NFL make him go straight backwards, make him go you straight just don't backwards. see that. Straight out of ATL. Got young one, jumping that thing, baby. Swiss beats, full surface. Yo. All right, enough of that, man. I mean, it's pretty much you just doing that over and over and over again. Why are you so angry, man? What's going on with you? Roy? You breaking up? One more time? I said, I'm just chilling. You just chilling? You wasn't chilling out there, man. <laughs> so, so, so you're really a cool guy, huh? That's only when you put the helmet and pads on? Oh, yeah, man. It's, it's, once you cross that line, it's, you got to be a different person, you know? You know, a lot of people are shocked that I'm a, a soft-spoken person, you know, and um, 
when I get on the football field, I'm I'm really I really don't have much to say. It's I'm it, it, it was go time back when I was playing. Go time, right? <laughs> now, now you say you turn into a different person. Like, do you have to get yourself there? Do you? Is there anything you say? You listen to music or like what puts you into that mind state of just a just an animal out there? No, I mean honestly, I like people wouldn't believe on some of the music I listened to before. Uh, <laughs> I mean, like literally, I would at least listen to like R and B. Oh man, uh, like 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 seriously, like I mean. Uh, I listen to some J.R. Pac, you know. I, you know, I listen to. Up, I used to listen to some up tempo, but sometimes I used to just like to be relaxed and just chill, you know. So, yeah, I used to listen to R and B a lot. Hey, hey guys, in the locker room, let's listen to Tchaikovsky Any, before we play. Any, nah, I never listen. Nah, it was always in my headphones. Now, nah, don't do me like that. <laughs> Say, oh, I'm listening to Jodeci. We about to play the Eagles, but right. I'm just feeling a little. <laughs> that's that's funny. I would have never guessed that, man. Never. Yeah. Well, I mean, let's take it back to your Oklahoma days. I don't know if people knew, or most should know if you follow sports, but um, you were definitely an All-American at Oklahoma, and you had one of the best plays in college football history. You know you know which one I'm talking about. Yeah, man, I, I hear about that. Being I, I live in Oklahoma now. I hear that at least at least about five times a day. Wow, wow. <laughs> De- well, Fans just coming up to me saying, man, I was in the end zone. Like, I don't know how many times people said they've been in the end zone on that play. I mean, I swear it's probably been over 50,000 people that have probably come up to me and said, I was in the end zone. My mom and them were in the end zone when that play happened. So Somebody lying. <laughs> yeah, somebody was lying. You know, sometimes you just got to smile and nod like, oh, okay, cool. You know, no problem. Happy that you enjoyed it. But, right. <laughs> you know, that, that, play, that play really, um, you know, spotlighted me as one of a, one of the marquee you know safeties in the league or in college so that was it was a defining moment for uh for me in college well let's let's show the play really quick just so the world knows i mean if they don't know they should yeah um I mean, but before we actually show it can you just walk us through in your mind what was going on before the play did you have a pre-snap read or well before before let's just paint the whole picture before that even happened probably around the first quarter second quarter i think it was the first quarter um, there's a running back number 25, Brett Robin. He actually, I tried to jump over him early in that game, and he basically hit me in the groin to cry. <laughs> <laughs> that, that 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 stuff burned, dude. Like my stuff was hurting, dog. That's why you're supposed to wear a cup, man. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, we don't do that. Yeah, no, nah, we don't do that. Where they do that at? <laughs> Went to the sideline, and my coach was like, "No, you can stay back in. Don't be jumping." So. Um, we kick, we punt at the ball. I think this is like the third, fourth quarter. We punt at the ball, and Nathan Vasher muffed it, and he tried to run it out, and we tackled him on the two yard line. Then it was like a TV timeout. So now, if you were to play it, you know, before we, before that timeout ended, my coach called me back over and he says, "Roy, do not jump." He told me like, "Do not jump." But that blitz that we were calling, I knew that I was going to be one on one with a, a running back that was like five, five, six, five, seven. I knew he was going to hit me low. He's like, "Yo, hi, John. Don't disrespect yeah. me. Like that. Don't don't disrespect <laughs> me like that. Go ahead, Roy. Please finish. You know. Um, but so, <clears throat> if we're rolling the tape, you'll see me. I, I misjudged the, the the cadence, so I got up there early. Then I backed up a little bit. Then I, I knew that it was going to be one on one with me and uh, Brett Robin. I didn't know what was going to happen, but I knew I was going to jump. <laughs> and you know, the ball the ball snapped. I jumped. I, I cleared him and. Um, I I first secured the tackle, which if you see, it's kind of like a horse collar because I grabbed him in the back part of his shoulder pads and my other with my right hand, I knocked the ball out and then the ball fluttered into uh, Teddy Lyman's hand and he ran it in and scored a touchdown. And if people really watch the game, we, you know, that did kind of seal the game. But then the following kickoff, I went down there, um, the following kickoff, I made the, I made the, was a tackle on the kickoff, then to try to go deep, and I intercepted the ball and all that cool stuff. I mean, it was <laughs> and that game. You know, I had a, I had a lot of good games in college. You know, I, I can't complain. I think we got the the clip ready. We got to let the yeah, world man. see the clip so let's, we know it. We let's show that. Man. Chris Sims in the long with a first down in the three after a mental mistake by Basher. Ball would have gone into the end zone, and they could have had it on the twenty. Cannot afford a mistake down here. They got two oh six to work with Longhorns with their timeouts left Lehman showing blitz there's the blitz 
Touchdown! Man. And the rest is history. And the rest is history. Hey, Ro, I got a question for you. This is JR. So I'm sitting here looking at this highlight, right? And, you know, it was a big play late in the game. But everybody's slapping your boy Layman's hand like he the one that made the play. How did you feel about that? I ain't seen nobody running over to you, you know, picking you up. Nothing. All he did was catch the ball. Right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, honestly, that doesn't, that doesn't bother me. You know, I mean, football is a team sport. And, I mean... I really, it doesn't bother me. Like, I mean, everybody knows what happened. Everybody, everybody knows, you know, they, they've seen it, you know, they, they show replays of it. And actually, if they, if you see that clip when I'm going to the sideline, you see Mike Stoops come up to me and hug me, but he's whispering in my ear, like, I mean, I don't know if you can cuss on here, but he was like, I told you, I told you not to F and jump. <laughs> <laughs> hey, basically, basically, you say you're not tripping because you got drafted anyway. Right. right. I was about to say, where is Layman at now? <laughs> oh, stop yeah, it. That's Teddy, rude, Teddy, man. Teddy made, the, he made it to the pros. He yeah, played man. for uh, the Lions, okay. actually. Yeah, he did. He played a few years. He was a very good player. He was. Yeah. yeah. Very cool. Well, I'm just saying, you got yours. You weren't worried about, you know, getting the credit was, or not. Nah, most definitely. I mean, I don't – I'm – I'm so bigger than that of who gets credit and who doesn't get credit. That that doesn't matter. As long as we win, I don't care who gets it. I mean, because guess what? If, we, if we're if we winning, well, we're all going to shine, and that's all that matters. Well, I heard you mention the horse collar on that play, and you said you grabbed him. And there's only a yeah. few athletes that can say they had rule changes made because of them. You know, you got Will Chamberlain, Shaquille O'Neal, and mm -hmm. Roy Williams. <laughs> In case you don't know, I feel like the NFL put that, that no horse collar rule in because of you. Speak on oh, that. Most definitely. Most, most definitely. definitely. How do you feel about that? Do you agree with the rule, and are you proud of it? <laughs> um, I'm one. I'm not proud of it because nobody ever wants their name associated with something negative. Mm -hmm. Um, but I mean, it's 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 kind of a double edged sword. I mean, yeah, it's cool. Like, wow, I got a, a rule that not only goes from professional goes all the way down to little league. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. if you think. That like nigga, that's my rule. So if I if I ever have a son, which I have two daughters, if I ever have a son, and a kid gets horse collar, they're gonna be like, you know, you know, that's because of me. It's all your fault. Out there it's dragging all people. your fault. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I mean, I, I it's football. But, I mean, if you ask me, I mean, you were your job is though is to get the guy down, get the ball carried down to the ground, and I mean, after To broke his leg, I think that's when they stepped in, and you know, they, they don't want the stars getting hurt. I guess. Yeah. But you know that's that's the thing though. Um, I don't I don't brag about hurting people because that's I just don't get down like that. Mm -hmm. You know I'm I love to play football. I was I played it very aggressive and very dangerously. I was gonna say you don't hurt a lot of people, Roy. I mean maybe not no, with the horse collar. Like, people but. don't people don't understand that year that Terrell broke his I broke I mean Tio's leg. I broke. Uh, what was that? Was that 2000? Was that 2006, 2007, something like that? But I broke about five people's, five or six people's legs that year. Oh my god! <laughs> nobody, talked about, nobody talked about it. You know right. what I'm saying? And now that it happened to To, and they're making a big fuss, Andy Reid, now and oh you shouldn't be able to tackle like that. But please help me understand this: How do you tackle somebody from behind? Right. Okay, if they're Okay, I'm not saying I'm the fastest person or the slowest person, but if somebody take gets a step on you, if you can reach out and you can grab them, then you're supposed to tackle them. Right. How you can't do that? And tell me, who the hell has ever seen Adrian Peterson? Oh God. <laughs> a, a tackle or right. a, a shooting tackle? Never. Never. That's a touchdown. So it's like now it's okay if you're out of position and then you have an opportunity to to, to grab them from behind. Do you want to sacrifice for the team to try to save a touchdown, or do you want to get fined? You know what I'm saying? It's, it's like, it's a, you, you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. Yeah, it's because lose, lose. Don't, you're going to be on ESPN, you're going to get talked about. You know what I'm saying? If you don't make it, but if you do, you get, you're get getting penalized, you're going to get a fine, you're going to get a 15-yard penalty. I mean, it's just like, come on. Right. Yeah. Speaking of injuries, though, uh, you play safety, and you were one of the hardest hitters of your time. What do you think mm -hmm. about all the uh, the head injuries and that issue? And, you know, you got players who are, you know, committing suicide and it's being linked to these head injuries coming from these hard hits. 
What's your take on it? It's honestly it's sad. Um, I mean, I'm not even gonna sit here. I mean, it's it's real. Like people don't understand that. That's it's real, dude. Like I mean, I <clears throat> I have to catch myself some days and just sit down, like just relax, like because you're always trying to go because you're so used to being on the schedule and and you know you got so much idle time in life once you walk away from the game. You know, and a lot of thoughts are running through your head. And, you know, there's so much, so much of your processing. You know, you got to understand how fast a, an athlete's mind is racing because that game is so, so fast. And, you know, it's 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 all a part of the game. I mean, you know, you, you know the risks um, there. I, I feel that the league, they're, they're trying to prevent a couple, I mean, a lot of those head injuries. But, I mean, it's, it's, it's tough to. Yeah. And it's... It's, I mean, it's, it's it's sad to think about, like, man, the game that you love is this, the, this is the cause of, of you killing yourself. You know wow, what I'm saying? Right. It's it's tough, you know, and I just wish that there were more programs or something out there for athletes can have a, an outlet to be able to talk to, to to help them. Because it's like, man, it's, I mean, like Junior say, I'm killing himself. It's like, damn, you yeah. know, it's just like... It's sad, I mean, man. what what would be so bad in your life that you had to take your take your life? You know, it's right. it's just tough. Right? right, right. Now, now we talked about you being a hard hitter. Um, it seems like the NFL is is moving towards what it has definitely moved towards an all out passing league, and it seems like they don't want that in the box hard hitting enforcer safety anymore. It just seems like they're going for the cover guy who can cover the slot. And, you know, that was the type of player you were. You were in the box and you were an intimidator. And you, if you caught the ball across the middle, you paid for it, um, you mm-hmm. know, along the lines of a Ronnie Lott and, you know, mm-hmm. go all the way back to Jack Tatum. Um, yeah. So, I mean, how do you feel about that? Do you think that the NFL is – or these, these organizations are making a mistake by moving away from that enforcer? Because I feel like the best way to stop a, a receiver from running a route is to pop him. <laughs> yeah. What's that? But I mean, it, you got you to gotta instill your will on people. Right. And that's – that's what I did, you know, and it, it is, it's, I don't even watch football anymore, honestly. Wow. It's because really? it's not, fo- it's not football, it's not football to me. Right. Wow. Like you said, the, just the, the, the Ronnie Lots, the Jack Tatums, the Steve Atwaters. Wow. You know, the Mike Harris, those, that's what I grew up on. Right. You know what I'm saying? The Keith Norton's that, that they led with their forearm. That's how I tackled. I right. mean, if you see me tackling, you see me bleeding with my head. <laughs> going off of people you see me leading with my forearm going through them now you know if you just sit back and you just literally if you sit back and you watch a game and see how many yellow flags are thrown because it's helmet to helmet horse collar um hitting a quarterback below their knees or you know just petty stuff like tackling people you know what i'm saying it's just like the league is sissifying the league now you know and it's just it's more like powder puff to me and that's no disrespect. I mean, that's, those are because of rule changes. But I'm not saying like the players are soft. I'm just saying that the league is making the players soft because it's like a receiver. They catch the ball. They get an opportunity to catch the ball, turn two steps, and then they're live. You can't you can't lie to me. Receivers back is turned to me. I see. It. I paint a, a red tarp. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to take his spine. Five yards the other direction. I mean, oh, that's man. just, cool. that, that's you know just that? violent, Roy. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's that's just what football is about for me because that's what I grew up on. Right. But we know we know that the re- the reason why they're making these real changes is because of what we were talking about before. You know, all the head injuries and the long term effects they have. So let me ask you this question. Okay, so you said, you know, if you have a son in the future, if you have a son, is he playing football? Is he strapping up? Um, that's the real question. Like, that's when it gets no, real. Honestly, no. It's it's his decision. If I have a son, I, I don't. I have two daughters. I'm I'm good. I, mm-hmm. I love him <laughs> having daddy's girls, but I really, it's his decision. You know, I can all only thing I can do is give him the information. Like these are look, this is what you're signing up for. Right now, I'm just gonna speak right now. Their football contracts are not guaranteed. Mm-hmm. Now, if you want to play a sport that you love do do it if you want to make it a business okay let's look at basketball 
You know what I'm saying? If you're a marquee guy, this this is your contract. This is all guaranteed. Baseball, if you make it to the big leagues, this is all the money that you're going to get, no matter what happens. Football, okay, it's all nice and pretty on paper, but the teams have the options and the rights if they want to exercise and give you your $60 million deal or your $60 million um, guarantee. You know what I'm saying? So if there's... There's, you know, there's hidden, there's hidden language in those contracts. So it's like, what, what do you want? Do you want guaranteed money, or do you want to be wishing on a star and hoping that the team, <laughs> you know, exercises the right to keep you around? Right. My kid to be smart enough to say, no, nah, Dad, I, I want guaranteed. Right. So, but if if he doesn't, then that's the risk he takes. You know what I'm saying? I mean, what, what it is, what it is. I mean, if that's what you love to do, then by all means, I'm going to support you. Definitely. You know? Now, Roy, um, right now, are you so? Are you still retired? Are you done with football, or, or what, what's the? What's... I am done with football. I don't. I honestly don't even know if I retired. I'm not even gonna lie. <laughs> you just chilling right now. Huh? <laughs> Long just, off season. Just chilling right Long now. Off season. Yeah. I'll well, think about I it. I might. I. I mean, I. I'm still. Actually, I need to reach back out to Jerry and Stephen Jones and make sure. I mean, because I, I want to retire as a cowboy. Because that's just what I am. That's just cowboy. beautiful. That's beautiful. Um, but. Um, it is what it is. I mean, I'm not, I'm not even tripping. I mean, I'm, I'm out here in Oklahoma living life. I mean, I, I have two daughters. I have my girl here, and we're just living. I mean, I, I, I started a couple of companies. I own a security company called Global Security Corporation. Oh, that's amazing. Um, um, and then I have a, a construction company called Torchmark Construction. Nice. Um, and then probably here... And in their future, we'll be having a, a staffing company as well. And I mean, you know, just I'm chilling. I'm just trying to ride off in the sunset, staying out of staying out of the limelight, just chilling. That's now, that's it. Now that's you mean, you mentioned your family and staying out of the limelight, and it's funny you say that because uh, very recently there's been you know all over these blog sites and all this news. I know you. I've known you for a long time, but um, just I want you to let the world know. Um, there's been on the blogs at one point you were engaged to Kelly Rowland, correct? Of Destiny's Child. Yeah, I was. Yeah, and and there she has a new song coming out, and you had to go out and basically clarify and, and clear your name of whatever she was saying in the lyrics. Is there anything you can say about that, and to our audience? No, nah, there really isn't much for me to speak on. You know, I pretty much said what I had to say, and people were like, "Well, if you really didn't do that, you shouldn't have to say anything." Well, to me personally, yes, 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 I do because one, I'm a Christian, right. and first off, I don't. I don't condone. I had a, I had a foundation for 2004 all the way to 2010, maybe. So about six years, whatever. I had a foundation called the Roy Williams Safety Net Foundation. That was for low incoming single parent mothers. Mm -hmm. And for somebody to think that me having a foundation for low incoming single parent mothers would think that I will put my hands on a woman is freaking crazy. Right. You'd have to be crazy. You know what I'm saying? Which, you know, people had to chime in. and But, you know, then I started thinking, and I talked to my big bro, Kevin Lyles. He used to be the president of Def Jam oh, yeah. and Warner Music and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. so he was like, Roy, why do you feel like you need to say anything? He was like, just leave it alone. Like, because I like, really, what are, what are people's opinions? They're, right. they're nothing. Just opinions. They can't hurt me. They, can't hurt me. They, they don't pay me. They can't affect me. You know what I'm saying? So... Why even like why even fall into trap of you know any of that you know so I just after talking to him it was just like it just it made the picture more clear and I, I really don't have I don't have anything to say about it I mean I wish her well you know what I'm saying at one time you know what I'm saying I was in love with her and I was engaged to her but that time has gone and you know it's past it's gone now I mean it's just it's come and gone and I wish her nothing but all the success. Actually, the song is good. I listen right. to the song, cool song. The song. Yeah, it's a good Damn. song. Right. I'd have been like, man, Kelly, can you not do that? I, I can't go to the grocery store without people looking at me funny. You at least know? say a name, man. You're incriminating people here. Yeah, I mean, I mean, because like I said, I know you, and, and so it wasn't a question for me. But I'm just happy that you handled it with class. Definitely. And, and, and you, I think you went about it the right way. You said what you had to say, and that's that. Yeah. So, but you know, it, it is what it is. I, I just, I mean, there's. I don't have nothing to prove to anybody. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I'm an open book. I mean, if you ask me a question, I'm going to tell you. you right. know, it just, it's just that simple. Um, but, I mean, it's that's life. And, you know, I was the only public relationship that she's pretty much, quote, unquote, had. Mm -hmm. um, so people people think it's me. I mean, I mean, honestly, if I wanted to write a book, oh, my goodness, my book will be 
juicy. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, well, before you write the book, please come back on Locker Room Live. Right. Just, just, you know, shoot, give, hit give, me on the text. Give us that exclusive, please. <laughs> I would never. I would never. But you know what I'm saying? It's. I mean, it's just life experiences. You know what I'm saying? Dealing with celebrities as far as dealing with other dealing with singers dealing with actresses dealing with just just a regular person that is just just a, a person i met in high school type deal i mean it's just each in each different level of person that i I've dated you know what i'm saying each each person has has their their issues but you, then you start looking at the, the the person um the person and it's just like man you know it's just like People like people want to be like in the limelight. Then the people in the limelight just want to be the like somebody that's behind the scene. I mean, it's just it's crazy. I mean, I, I got to see I got to see her trans um, her transformation from being a superstar to just being a somebody that wasn't a part of the group. I mean, it's I mean, it was when she was singing that song. I used to live. I mean, I know about that. Every when she's singing that song, it's like man, I. I understand what she's talking about because I had to deal with a lot of stuff. You were there. Yeah, I mean, I had to deal with a lot of stuff, and that's. that's I mean, that's pretty much all I'm going to say. I I dealt with a lot of that stuff. Yeah. But when she's when she's singing, I'm just like, wow, you know. I was like, I had to, I had to freaking live that with you. You know what I'm saying? Like it's that's crazy, but it's neither here nor there. Yeah, you know? I, I think we got to clear it up now, man. And, that's real. You know, and. And that's real. So now, like, tell us what's going on with you, and what what holds for, what what does this future hold for you? Like, what what do we what do you have on the plate on the agenda coming up? Um, honestly, I, I really don't. Like, I'm chilling, chilling, I'm still, just chilling. Yeah, <laughs> well, so you put I mean, in your word. I mean, seriously. I mean, I have my company. I have my I have my two companies, and that's it. And I'm raising my daughters. You know what I'm saying? And, and that's a job right there. Probably get married here, and in, in the near future, I get married or whatnot, and. Actually, I need to find my blueprints for my house I want to build, and I'm I need to make some adjustments to that. But I mean, it's I'm chilling. Like I mean, there's like business is good. I mean, I'm like literally we have a security company, and we're in Louisiana, we're in um, Oklahoma, we're in Pennsylvania, Ohio, and we'll be licensed in Texas at the end of the month. You know, started off in January. Um, building our first client and now we're up to we have roughly around 45 to 50 employees right now you know by the end of the year we'll probably be at about 200 employees well, so, J- I mean, jr said he needs some security to keep the ladies off of him i don't know can you send hey <laughs> it's getting rough i have here. no problem i mean if it's <laughs> i mean getting licensed in each state is, is is it's it's a challenge but i mean if he if he really needs that man we'll get licensed in whatever state he needs us to be licensing and no i was definitely they, just they, joking no, with no, you. no you wouldn't they're i was just joking the, they are catching the vapors out here in la <laughs> that was definitely <laughs> a joke <laughs> you, know, I mean, when you, when, you know what's so crazy about la it's like you can paint the pic, the picture of you like if you're just an average joe if you're a little person that if you if you're a person with some kind of little bit of money and you can paint the picture that you're something that you're really not. Girls flock to that. Yeah, that's L.A. <laughs> in in a nutshell. I, dating I, advice from Roy Williams. I had, <laughs> right. I had, some, like, I had two bodyguards that are my boys just all buff with the shades and keeping people away, pe- keep, keeping people away from me. People will gravitate to it like, man, who is that? Is that you know Obama? That's so sad. <laughs> people are so they all look alike. It's like. It's it's very sad. I mean, just because I I seen it firsthand, and I mean, I used to I had an apartment in L.A. You know what I'm saying? I I lived in us the Archstones. I don't know where that's at. Somewhere and by Studio City, I think. I don't know. Yeah, whatever. I mean, it's probably Arch probably too luxury probably. for us, <laughs> right? <laughs> it was. It wasn't all that. I mean, it's, <laughs> I forget the street I, I lived off of, but I mean, it was not too. I don't know. Whatever. But it was cool. You know what I'm saying? But. I only honestly, I only lived there for about probably a month out of the whole year, and I mean, it's just like, dude, I ain't about this life. I don't even yeah. care. You know what I'm saying? You're like, right, right. Know. Grown man out here. Yeah, you know, it's just like this. It sucks. I mean, it's like you go out. It's the same people, just different clothing, and it's just like, I, is this what life's all about? You know what I'm saying? And it's not. I mean, there's so much more to life. I mean, there's so much more living you can do go travel you know what i'm saying go see right. different states go see different countries right. and see how other cultures do it i mean people 
people trip out like, man, you're from the Bay, but you live in Oklahoma. Yes, I live in Oklahoma because the way of life right. is was so much better than in Oklahoma. Forget the, the cost of living, yes, is a beautiful thing. <laughs> but you the way you live, you know what I'm saying, and, and people treat you with respect. You know what I'm saying? Like you walk down the street, people say hi to you. You can't do that in California. You you open a door for somebody, they're looking at you crazy. Well, I mean, Roy, you was probably hanging out on Slauson and Crenshaw with the, with the with the Bloods, man. You can't do that. <laughs> There's some good upstanding people here in California. Say nah, man. Well, it's definitely. I'm just saying. I'm just in general. Like, if you literally go anywhere in California, you know, hell, you go to Beverly Hills and open the door, they're gonna think you're probably the help opening the door. Let's just be real. <laughs> that you're just a nice person. Right. You know what I'm saying, but I'm just telling you that. Nine out of t- nine out of ten. Well, let's go seven out of ten times. You do a nice gesture for somebody; they're not going to say thank you. Right. In California, you know what I'm saying? They're just so busy doing their own thing. You know what I'm saying? Not I'm not going to say they're stuck up or rude, but that's just you do in Oklahoma. So somebody they're going to say thank you. Right. They're going to be appreciative. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's just it's not the way of life are, are two different things from Oklahoma to California or wherever else. At. I mean, it's just. That's well, why. I'm, well, tell them to get it. tell them to get a Starbucks and a you know some normal like a Target or something out there, and I might think about moving out there. When I think Oklahoma, I think of tornadoes and There's, haystacks. The only thing that Oklahoma doesn't have is mountains. <laughs> um, they don't have no In and Out. We have Starbucks. <laughs> we have uh, Target. We have all that stuff. Don't don't do us like that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, look. When you in L. A., make sure you stop by the studio, man. We would love to have you on the studio. For sure, I will most definitely do it. Yeah, man. We appreciate it, man. And like I said. We followed your career. You know I followed you. You know you my boy, and, and I'm a cowboy lover for life. And we appreciate you coming on the show and sharing sharing everything with us, man. For sure, man. It's been fun. So we'll be looking out for you when you're in L.A. Stop by. All right. Holla. All right. Well, Wins. Thank you, man. Yep. The legend. That boy. was that was good, man. That was excellent, man. Yeah. He gave us an inside scoop on a lot of stuff. A so lot of stuff. And he's, he's a star. Yeah, he's a rock star. <laughs> right. No, I mean the star, Dallas Cowboys. Nah, anybody. whatever, man. So yeah, that that was a good interview. Um, let's jump into some current news now. You know, yeah. we got a little, we got a few minutes left. Um, some things happened this week. Um, we had uh, Donovan McFlab. I mean McNab. <laughs> um, we had McNab um, saying something about RG three. Um, he basically said that RG three has too much. She's doing too much. Yeah. Uh, what I mean, I think that's just. Hater. Yeah, thank you. I was just hoping you was gonna say it, man. It sounds gotta like go hate take to me. Take a shower, wash off some of that hate. That sounds like hate to me, man. I mean, I've I've heard a lot of people try to spin it differently. Like, oh, he should listen to Donovan McNabb. Like, no, he should listen to himself nah. and his father. Nah. You know, like this is the thing. RG three came into the league. He took it by storm. You know, he was a Heisman Trophy candidate. I mean, winner. Mm-hmm. Came into the league. He took the Redskins from terrible to the playoffs. Yeah. The playoffs. Playoffs. And he made Very it happen. Quickly. Now, he got hurt because Mike Shanahan <laughs> kept getting confused with him being a running back or receiver or a quarterback <laughs> and sending him on running plays. But that's not him. That's on the coach. Yeah. So, for, for to me, for Donald McNabb to say that, just because he had a press conference at the – when people want to ask him the question anyway, yeah. he has to get it over with. Yeah. Like, dude, why, do you, why does he think that RG3 needs to listen to him? I don't get it. I mean, he's a smart guy. He's got his head on straight. I, I think he has – you know, like he said in the interview, he said, you know, I want to be one of those guys chi- – I can be one of those guys chiming in on guys' lives like all these other analysts. Right. You know, I got something to say. Right. I think that's more of him just uh, feeling like he has something to, to prove still. You know, well, just because his uh, his career was good and good and terrible. Boy, well, it wasn't. It wasn't. It, that boy, terrible. Good, <laughs> you know, good and terrible. I mean, honestly, like McNabb was one of my favorite players. As you know, I, I had the number five in high school because of him. I remember. Yeah, I mean, I love McNabb, but you know, as the years went on, he just. I, to be honest with you, he just. He had all the talent in the world, but he was a little bit of a choke artist. Very similar to Tony Romo nowadays. A little bit. Yeah. Very much so. so. I mean, and that's not to say that just because he, he still played at the highest level and he was a great player. And so I'm not saying that that's the reason he shouldn't have words or words of encouragement or um, be able to be an influence in RG3's life. But I just think the timing is bad. Yeah, I don't, but don't tell somebody, you can't be more successful than I was. Yeah. You can't handle more fame. You can't handle more stuff going on in your life than I could. And he's talking about the commercials. Right. Like, uh, uh, chunky Soup? Exactly. Come on. Right. He did the same thing. Right? I mean, he did the same thing. So for me, to, to me, he's just being a hypocrite. Yeah. And he's talking about something where there is no story there. 
Yeah. RG three is not getting into trouble. He's not doing. He's not showing up. His teammates love him. Right. You know, he's not being a distraction. So Donovan McFlab, go Just sit down go somewhere sit right down, now. Please. Just go sit down. And we. I mean, I, I say that with all the love in my heart. Yeah. Um, uh, Grant Hill <laughs> and Jason Kidd retired. Uh, love Jason Kidd. He is a Bay Area uh, resident. Yes. Um, but it was time. It was time. Forty years old, man. That's a that's an amazing and career. And it did right well. There. Real quick, give me your top five point guards ever. 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 Ooh. Okay. Um, in no particular order. No, well, yeah, you got to get an order. Give it an order. Jay right? Kidd. At I'm number say, one? No, no, no. No particular order. Well, what's the point just of that? Just because we just said it, right? Jay Kidd, he's one of them. Okay. We can put him in order later. Okay. Uh, I like Gary Payton. I think he was one of the best, especially the, on the defensive end of the ball. Yeah, talk about bias. You're just going to name all Oakland point guard. Damian, uh, Damian Lillard. <laughs> I mean, these guys were Brian Shaw. Magic is Magic considered a point guard? <laughs> yeah, Magic, Magic yes, is a he's point considered guard. A point so, guard. gotta give it up to Magic. He's mm-hmm. not a Bay Area guy. Um, I'm about to name another Bay Area one. Maybe this is not the question for me. I'm well, just gonna I mean, name all the people I had on my wall as a kid. I mean, I got Magic one. I mean, let me be honest with you. I got Isaiah. I got Zeke one. Really? I mean, I didn't want to. I didn't want to go there because I feel like everybody gives me props. But I mean, that's that's my opinion. I think Zeke was the best point guard ever. Wow. I mean, I saw him bust Magic on one foot. I mean, it was nice. On one leg. He was nice. I mean, everybody, Magic, Magic. I mean, Magic was great, but you, you put James Worth. He had an all-star team over there. Kareem, mm-hmm. James, you give that team to Zeke, and he never loses. He did. He right. Zeke just played with a bunch of bullies. No, Isaiah's good. That's Isaiah's it, you know? Good. So, I mean, I go Zeke 1, Magic 2, and Jason Kidd 3. And then maybe John Stockton four. I, I heard a list that had Nash three or something. That's just uh, absolutely not on the top. You five. can't be in top five. You can't guard anybody in the NBA. <laughs> Come on. And Steve Nash is good. Shout out to Steve. He, he is good, but like I said, he can't guard anybody in the NBA. Yeah. Nah. Yeah. Gary Payton. He would. He don't want to see GP in his prime. Nah. GP, are you with me? Uh, anyway, um, in more mm-hmm. news, in more news, the Nuggets fired uh, George Carl. Um. Where they do that? <laughs> I don't understand why they would get rid of a coach right. that just got coach of the year. Right. Where they do that at? Where did they do that at? <laughs> you got a highly successful coach. Right. You took a you made a team overachieve that probably shouldn't have went as deep as they did, and you fire them for that. I mean, that's the nuggets being the nuggets. Hey. I mean, Where what, they do that at? <laughs> what what can you say? I mean, I don't I don't get it. They say it was because he wasn't playing JaVel McGee a lot. JaVel McGee. I mean, I but think like he played enough. <laughs> I mean, but the thing about that is you don't I can imagine some of the stuff JaVel McGee did in practice. You know, he probably showed up late. Uh, <laughs> you know, he probably showed up with, without his shoes on or something. You know, like coach you know, forgot my left shoe. I forgot my jersey coach, my fault. <laughs> you know, like I just see that in him, you know? So like I, I know it was a reason why George Carl just could not play this guy. And and to fire a coach after he just was Coach of the year. Well, what's next for George Carl? Oh, I, I mean, if he goes to the Clippers, it's a problem. I think that's well, highly, his up tempo offense. I, I think that's a good look for LA. That'd be a very good look. I think George Carl would take that just to stick it to Denver. Seriously, in the Western Conference. Man, listen. I mean, well, I'm just happy then he's going from Denver because Denver was giving my Warriors problems. Right. But um, anyway, um, Stephon Marbury is back in the news. <laughs> He he owes his mistress, yes, his mistress, three hundred thousand dollars. Child, please. I mean, <laughs> are you kidding me? Child, his please. mistress. How does that how does that work? Apparently, in two thousand and six, I I think he was caught with the mistress, or maybe she she threatened him or blackmailed him or something to tell his wife or girlfriend. I don't know the specifics, but he agreed to give her six hundred thousand dollars. I guess he stopped, and I think the judge. Was, I think the court was involved with this as well. Right, had to be right. So I think he stopped playing at three hundred thousand, and now she's going back to court demanding the other three three hundred thousand or his assets, like his car and his house and stuff. Oh man, I don't know how you get caught up in baby that mama of, drama. It still happens. That ain't even baby mama. That's just that's mistress. Mama that's mistress drama. drama. Man, I just thought that was interesting. I mean, that's crazy to me. What else is going crazy. on? Uh, the guy uh, we got a tackle from the uh, Steelers that was stabbed by yeah, Wes was- Khalifa. Affiliate Taylor game. That's uh, that's not a good look for, for yeah. Wiz. Man. Uh, not a good look for Mike. It's not a good look for anybody in that situation. Current news is just getting crazier and crazier each week for us, isn't it? It's uh, like you would think that you know people would start to say, you know, hey, maybe I should be smart with the yeah. things that I do in the off season. Yeah, and like we said, we don't like to give this news, but I mean, like if it's there, what can we do? But I mean, I mean okay, we, did so? Did they catch the guy? Did they catch any of the guys? There? Yeah, they caught one of the guys, and he's like Wiz Khalifa's cousin, or he's part of Taylor Gang. If sure. you for, for the audience that follows Wiz Khalifa. What were they? I mean, why? What was it premeditated? What did Mike? No, they carjacked him. They walked up on him, and the guy stabbed him and took his truck. So you hang out with someone who's rich, and then you go and try to 
Well, obviously, he's, somebody else that was rich. Obviously, he's not hanging out. Maybe Wiz already kicked him out of the group. Or for a shenanigans like that. Maybe uh, it was a uh, hey, you're trying to you're trying to initiate you and get you in the in the in the Taylor gang or whatever, you know. I you have juice now, man. You, <laughs> he got the juice. He now. got the juice now. He got the the knife now. <laughs> right. Well, I'm happy. Mike Adams, the tackle for the Pittsburgh Steelers, he's doing okay. Um, he's going to make a full recovery. And I think he's going to be back on the field in about six weeks. Yeah, they said he should be ready. Yeah, right. so that's good news, man. Let's stop the violence, people. Please, say yeah. no to drugs Say and no violence. to drugs and violence and watch Locker Room Live. and make your life better. There you go. See, instead of going out and jack, carjacking people on Fridays, you watch, get, Locker, you Room watch Locker Room Live. You can watch We should make some T-shirts. And then carjack them afterwards. No. <laughs> anyway. Scratch that. So let's go into our, our, our segment, which is called Where They Do That At. Right. Where you will hear. Where they do that? Right. For random shenanigans that have made the news. Uh, Where do you find that ratchet girl doing a voice? Hey, that's my homie, and she's not ratchet. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, ratchet girl. That's John. She's JR's probably homie. watching right now. Look, I, she I might apologize. Be calling in right now. I apologize. Yes. Um, <laughs> but in the news, we have a video, and, and during the in Miami Indiana Pacers game, we had Flo Rider that you know was on the courtside seat. And obviously, I was I was blinded by his chain. This, this was let's show not much, uh, This was just bizarre. not much drama in the fourth quarter, aside from Flo Rida's manager, who was like, apparently asked by Flo Rida to tell you what. If I saw Flo Rida a- right now, boy, I, whoa, look at all that jewelry. Wait, wait, his I manager knocked, got I, his I'm, manager got kicked out no, because of what? No, the, the arena didn't kick him out, and the NBA didn't kick him out. But apparently, Flo Rida said, "Look, you're my manager, but you got." You got to stop, man. You got to go. Oh, hey, man, let me tell you something. Put Florida. He's no longer hey. his manager. Hey, I let me tell you. Can you put Florida up there again? Oh, man. Yeah, I'm sure they will. Come on, oh, man. I want to see this. Man, I'd knock the hell out of him if I caught him in the alley. <laughs> <laughs> That's a million dollars right there. <laughs> well, yeah, we don't know if it's real or not. Oh, it, <laughs> come on, man. You can't custom. make no fake necklace that big. Could be custom. Could be custom. Right. You tried? Yeah. What? What? You tried? Oh, hey. No, you can't make one? Hey, the funniest part about the clip is, did you hear Ernie? What is it? Ernie? Yeah. You hear Ernie hate? I, we don't know if it's real or not. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you hear what Charles said after that? He said, don't be mad at me, Ernie, because I'd be stacking paper to the ceiling. Oh, my God. I love Charles, man. And hey. then Ernie came back and said, yeah, riding 24-inch chrome. Oh. <laughs> you missed that at the end. Yeah, I did. I missed all that. Ernie's the man, man. Ernie be holding his own up there, don't he? I, yeah, love, he do. I love those guys, man. We we give those guys a lot of love because we respect them and what they do. I think Charles is hilarious, and he tells his mind. And, yeah, if Flo Rida got caught walking around with that thing, it wouldn't be safe. No. Nah. That chain was humongous. Oh God! I mean, oh God! <laughs> I had to be at least fifty thousand. It, it might weigh more than me. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty. Ridiculous. I'm on the weights though. I mean, but did you see his manager though? Like, wait, really? I, I was like, is that a overweight uh, Kevin Hart? I mean, who was that dude? One of the, I, that I heard was, it was one of the Haitians that down was there in Flo, Miami. Flo Rider's manager, right? Yeah, well, that's amazing. Like, what, what is he doing negotiations? Like, does he negotiate his contracts or like his mute? Like, what does he do? Like, I need his job description because he's not professional. Apparently, I don't. I wonder what he kicked him out for. I have no idea. You sitting there courtside on the wood. On the wood. Life is good, right? You know what? What could you do? Or what? Well, actually, that was right when something happened. Somebody. Oh, that's when uh, your boy pushed. Uh, remember they got into a little skirmish at the end of that game. Oh, uh, uh, Pendergraph. He was Pendergraph. Mad. Yeah, yes. Pendergraph. He's mad. His Pendergraph. last name is Pendergraph. That's yes. what he wanted to let some steam off. Yes. He's like, my father. Yeah. Where do they name people Pendergraph? And he's like, my father screwed me, dude. I'm gonna pick a. <laughs> I'm gonna fight somebody today. <laughs> How did as I, soon as he got in, he just going got in, in and shoves. Norris Cole, right? I think it was, I think it was Norris Cole. Norris Cole squared up on him, too. Right. He was about to give it to him. He was he's, about to go, go punch him in his kneecap because Norris Cole was like six feet tall. That dude was seven feet tall. He, got the juice now, he was about to get some <laughs> juice. He was about to give it to Pendergraph. N- Norris Cole had the juice? He, he had it. He had the haircut and he had the bishop haircut and everything. He was ready. Dude, Pendergraph stepped on that court ready to fight. I mean, he's like, look at the name on the back of my jersey. <laughs> you think I'm happy right you know now? I'm upset. You know I'm upset. But anyway, yeah, so we got a lot coming up on next week, um, so tune in. Um, it's been a great show. Um, we give all our thanks to uh, Roy Williams. Shout out to Roy. Shout out to Roy. Um, thanks for coming through and support. Um, and next week, please call in. Please check the show out, RMC on air, We want to hear from you. Come, you know, join the conversation here at Locker Room Live. Yeah, we didn't take any calls today just because we had a great interview from Roy, but we will be taking some next week. And um, thanks again for joining us. And I'm Smitty Clutch, your host. I'm Jr. Holla at us. Holla at us. We started from the bottom. Now we are here. We working our way up. Slowly. But we making it. Slowly, 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 slowly. (laughs) 